because we can't just keep it to ourselves. We have to, what we learn, we have to let other people know too. So when you are converted, you strengthen your brother. Amen. Um, the daily braids, I'm running out of daily braids, so somebody told me that they have them on, online. So anybody that needs a daily braid, go to the daily bread app. They, um, you can order, um, not order, but you can um, get the app and follow the daily bread from online. So don't get discouraged. Just get an app. You know how to get apps. There's apps out there for everything. So they informed me that it was a daily bread app. So those of you online, get an app and um, follow daily um, to stay connected to God. Amen. Okay. So that's it. That was quick and that was it. Um, I'm going to read some, um, something that somebody sent me that's very encouraging and I think everybody, I wanted everybody else to be encouraged by this word also. Glasses. Okay. okay, it's called Mistakes Make You. You don't make mistakes, mistakes make you. Mistakes make you smarter, they make you stronger, and they make you more self-reliant. Do not live in fear of what you have done wrong. Learn the lesson, grab the opportunities that arise because of your mistakes, and then gratefully move on. This is how you grow. So, we all know that we're gonna make mistakes, of course, because we're not perfect. But what you do is you pick up, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and you keep it moving. We're all going to make mistakes, and we're not done making mistakes. So let's learn from those mistakes. We're not just supposed to keep making the same mistakes over and over, but we might. But that's our test. Until we pass those tests, we're going to keep going through the same thing over and over. But we have to rest assured in God that he's our Lord and Savior, and he'll put, bring us through those mistakes. Um, if we stay connected, we'll make it through and we'll do good. We have to make sure that when we know better, we do better. Mm -hmm. And once we do better, we can become a better us. So the, the Bible says he is the vine and we are the branches. And without him, we can do nothing. So whatever we're going through, if it's a marriage, it's a job, it's relationships, we can do nothing without him. So make sure you stay connected to God in everything you do, and he will bring us through because without him, we can do absolutely nothing. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today's scripture reading will be coming from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. And that's Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. And it reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise his name. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in a word of prayer this morning, thanking him for what he's doing this morning. Father, we do thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. For bless us to keep us in all things. Thank you for your word that's given this morning. In all things, oh, Father God, we glorify, we magnify you this morning, Father God, praying that the Holy Spirit will have his way, praying, oh, Father God, that those who hear the word, hearts, minds be cleared open to be able to receive your word, oh, Father God, we may hear from you. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Bible talks about the book of Timothy, you know, I've been turning it right now, it says that contentment, godliness without contentment, you know, contentment with godliness is great gain. It talks about being content, Paul talked about being content in all things. Um, the scripture I had with Sean to read this morning, talking about very popular teaching of scripture, to trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding, in all our ways acknowledge him, and he will direct our paths. Um, I want to go personal this morning into a personal thing I do. I don't, people always say, Pastor Q, you don't never talk about what you go through. I don't. And the reason, let me tell you, the reason why I don't tell a lot of my business is because I, I'm a person, I tell my business to God. Now, I, I do confess and I do talk to people, but me personally, this may be a bad way of being, but there's no need to tell you when you can't do nothing about it, right? So, what I do is I take everything to the Lord in prayer. I've grown to maturity where I don't tell everybody about what's going on wrong with me. 
Because for one, I don't need all those different answers. Somebody get blessed? Yes. Yes. You told 10 people, you got 10 different answers. I need one answer. I don't need what you would do because you're not me. I'm a spiritual being. I'm not a carnal-minded being. I don't need 10 different answers from 10 different people. We've gotten to a place in time where soon as something goes wrong, we tell everybody looking for an uh, answer from everybody. I have one solution to all my problems. I need one answer, and, and that's it. That's all. No need to tell everybody about what I'm going through. And I've learned that's just a way of manipulation for sympathy. I don't know who I'm talking to, but, you know, right after you tell me what's wrong, can you cash out me something? So we, we have found a way to tell everybody what's wrong and then ask for a cash out or Venmo or PayPal. I need to tell you something to move upon your heart of manipulation. This is a spirit of witchcraft. I just want to teach you. Whenever you, when people call you with their issues, it's to move you to give. We've all been that way before. It's a movement to give, but that's not the message today. This one is something I want to give to you. What I've struggled with in ministry and is people coming and people going. That's always been my struggle. It's something I, I deal with, but I, I come to tell about it today. And God showed me something through a system. I want you to get blessed by this message. God is an adder. He's a multiplier. He's a subtractor. Yes. And there is a time of division. Yes. You know, when, when you struggle as a pastor, and this is what God has shown me, as a pastor, you want to fill seats. Mm -hmm. Okay? But when you go to the scripture that says the Bible talks about that, God added to the church whom shall be a part of the church. Yes. God says, you invite, but I add. Mm -hmm. Learn that I have invited people to places where God was supposed to be doing the addition. And since you have added, God has to subtract. When you add what you want to add, there's going to be some subtraction. When you allow God to do it, there's going to be some multiplying. Guess what God says to me? He says, Q, I'm subtracting what you have added. And when you allow me to do the math, I will multiply. Yes. And the reason why you have the issues you have is it's the division that's in it. Is Christ divided among There's division because of what you have added. And since there's division by what you have added, I must what? Subtract. God says, you don't add to what I have given you. I do the adding. I do the multiplying. And when it's not right, there will be some subtraction. And if I don't subtract, there will be what? Division. God said, you, you keep inviting people, I'm going to send people. It's not for everybody to support your business. God says, when I gave you the vision, I will give you the provision. Sometimes you're asking the wrong people to support what God has given you. Yeah, I have 5,000 friends. I know a lot of people. But the people I know were not... <laughs> the people I know, it wasn't the intention of God to make me a pastor because of people, I, because of the people I know. Yeah. God says, Q, listen, I, the ministry, ministry cannot be about how many people you have because then that means you will have another church. He says, when I gave you the calling, I told you to make disciples of men. So if your, if your ministry is about discipleship, do not be bothered when you lose church people. Church people don't want to become disciples. Church people want to have church. So when you come to this ministry, you are being birthed and taught to be a disciple, not a person to worship at church. So what I have lost is church people. I've lost no disciples. Jesus had 12 disciples. Before that, he had 120 disciples. Disciples and followers. When Jesus told them foxes have nests, uh -huh. 
No foxes, birds have nests, foxes have holes, but the Son of Man have no place to lay his head. And he asked them and, and, and checked them about why they were really following him. He said, you follow me because I fed you. Jesus found out the people that was following him was following him because he was feeding them. And I'm not talking about the word. He found out he had people following him before the benefits. And when there were no more benefits, he said, it's time to subtract. Have you ever heard the saying that less is more? Gideon, less is more. God says, Q, I think this is what it is. God dealt with me one day. He says, Q, I think I know what it is. You, you think because you don't have the people that the people represent your anointing. Yeah. He says it has nothing to do with it. He said, what? You want the, the things that the mega pastors have, only thing they have over you is the people. Mm-hmm. Come on, now they have more people than you. Mm-hmm. He says, guess what he says I'll do? He did what he did for me. Favor, right? He says, I'll give you what the mega pastors have, but I won't give you the people. If you know anything about me, I have just about what they have. Drive just about what they have. What I don't have is the people. But I can go toy with toy and anything else for anybody else. I just don't have the people. I've never had the people. I've had the viewers, the watchers. I've never had the people. People have told me, they see what I have, they say, it must be passing the plate good. I say, if you come in, you're lucky to see 15, 10 people. How can he do it with 10, 15 people? How can he have what he had with 10 of them? Now they question. <laughs> Somebody told me the other day, this was great teaching. Somebody says, listen, man, um, people probably won't support you because you, you post your cars and stuff like that. And I said, well, that's okay because anybody that knows me knows my heart. So if I offended you, if my Mercedes coupe, that's fine. Because guess what? You, see, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with you walking out the door because what I found out through God is that you don't make a payment. I can boast in this. Brother Bruce, Bruce, I've lost big titles. And I never asked them to return. Because I know that without you, it's still going to get done. I'm here to say, I've lost more people than I've ever had members. And my lifestyle never changed. Manipulation says, I can't let you leave. And the reason why I don't want you to leave because I'm afraid of what may change. When you're confident and you know that God is your supplier, you can let people walk. God has showed me plenty of times. I remember when Scott Amashani would tell you he was at the elementary school. And you know, with ministry, and this is, you know, what, what we shouldn't do, but this is what pastors do. We learn to develop relationship with the titles, mm-hmm. the heavy titles. Mm-hmm. Okay? And you don't want them to leave because you know that if this person leaves, you know we're just making a rent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's like that in relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like that in relationships sometimes. Sometimes it may be, it may be bad in a relationship, but, but, but the thing is, I, I don't want to raise these kids by myself. I don't want to pay half this stuff by myself. I, I don't want to do it by myself, so I hold on to something. And then one day I just get a boldness. One day I get a boldness. I say, forget this whole relationship. I, I don't care what I, what's subtracted or what's taken away. My peace is better than anything. Tell you what, man, God will remove things to see where your trust lies. Yes, exactly. I've lost people, 
but never have I lost his provision. People have left and taken their money with them. And I'm still here. The people have left with the intent to see if what they were given was going to stop. But the thing is, when God is, is, is the source, He's the source. Yeah. He's not the resource. He is the source. Yeah. My job is a resource. Yeah. My training is a resource. Yeah. But I'm always connected to the source. <laughs> this type of boldness of teaching, people don't like because we have to and ministry the way it's taught. And I found out the more, I, I have been invited into a lot of seminars from, from ministry, okay? And the only thing the seminars of ministry has taught me, not how to teach the Bible, but how to gather people. So Christian memberships, Brother Bruce, is no longer about saving souls. It's a salesmanship to teach you of a pyramid scheme of how to preach to get people. But when your ministry is about discipleship, that won't work for me. Because I'm a disciple. I make disciples of people. And when church people come, church people come to receive financial. Disciples come to receive the word. So it's two different types of receivers. Some people come here to get blessed. Not knowing that I have taught them they were blessed before they got here. I teach people, you don't come here to get blessed. I teach you how to be blessed before you get here. I'm not issuing, issuing out a blessing. I'm blessing you that you may have. He says, I will give you life and I will give you life. I come to give you life and I get to come to give you life more abundantly. Church people, because we've been to so many churches, we're always going to different churches looking for what word we can receive under the profit of the prophetic that we may profit. I come to church this morning to hear a word that confirms what I want. The greatest thing they used to do in churches before church is they had Sunday school. Yeah. Sunday school was to be able to teach you about the Bible before the pastor started teaching yeah. or preaching whatever he did to give you a knowledge. Yeah, the thing about it is to be able to come to church and get rich spiritually. Let the poor say that I'm rich. Church people come to receive. And what happens is they come to a ministry like this where the word of God is being taught. And they say, that's not my thing. I need to go somewhere where, my, my, um, where I'm being entertained. This man is up there teaching. I, I didn't come to be taught. I didn't come to be a disciple. I came to have church. Jesus went into the church and he flipped over tables. I was talking to a guy this week and he said, man, um, I tell him about, you know, invite him to church and all that. And one of his greatest concerns he told me was, how many times do you guys pass that plate? Here we have an individual I can't invite to church because he's more concerned about how many times we pass the plate. Yeah. He's letting that keep him from a relationship or an experience with God, wondering about how many times we pass the plate. That's because he has been to in a church and he has been offended by the passing of the plate. In the church, Jesus went into the church and he didn't, Jesus didn't go into the street and try to clean up the street. He went into his father's house and cleaned that up because he said, this is where the offense is taking place. Yeah. Yeah. The, the offense is not being taken place in the street. The offense is being taken place in the church. I've come to correct the church. Even in Revelations, he's come to correct the church because that's where the offense is taking place. So since the offense was taking place in the church, he removed his ministry from the church, took the church to the street. Nobody want to talk about that. Yeah. Jesus was here today. He would not be in a building. When he did go in 
turn over tables. It was in his father's house. I've said again that so many people are offended by what has happened in church. And it's amazing that we're all offended by our giving. Render unto Caesars, what is Caesars? Render unto Lord, what is God? We have stopped coming to church based off of what the church gets, but nobody has stopped going to work because of what you pay in taxes. Has paying taxes stopped anybody from going to work? It hasn't, and it's more than a tenth. You know, I'm not even telling you to believe in the tip, but you pay more in taxes than you do in tithes, and you're, glad, and you're gladly to pay taxes and get some of it back than to pay God and reap bountifully. That doesn't make any sense to me. I gladly pay taxes, don't miss it. I'm set to pay tithe until what God who makes all things happen. Mm -hmm. Then you get to a place that you find out even your job couldn't keep you during the time of a pandemic. You had to rely on the, you had to rely on the favor of God during a pandemic. Yeah. You had to rely on the favor of God during a pandemic. Yeah. And the people you pay taxes to mm -hmm. had to be moved by the spirit of God <laughs> to give you a chance. And the thing about it, the job you so much depended on couldn't even say you laid you right off. Mm -hmm. Turned you right over to a system. That God had to move throughout a system mm -hmm. to bless you. To help you maintain what you had when you had a job. Yeah. I'm going to give you great teaching and I'm going to say this and I'm going to bless you. I may offend some. God had been so good to people <laughs> during the pandemic that some people till this day don't even want to go back to work. God been so good to us through food stamps and public assistance that we don't even want to go back to work. It has made us lazy. Pharaoh has been so good to them in Egypt that when it was time to get free, they didn't even want to be free. God says there's only a season yeah. of assistance. Yeah. And when I remove the assistance, it's time for you to move on to. Yeah. I heard somebody say this week they were cutting food stamps. Yeah. God says that's for you to rely on me. Yeah. I know they're dropping it down from six to four. I don't care about that. Yeah. I've been providing the whole time. Yeah. This is the week this is the season where they lay people off. This is the season where they cut hours. We've been through this season before. In the time of Joseph, God says, listen, there's getting ready to be a famine. So I give you seven years of good and plenty because there's going to be seven years of famine. Take the seven years of good and plenty that I give you and use that to be able to store up for the seven years of famine. When God is blessing you, be careful how you spend your blessings. Your blessing is not for you to run out and blow it on a shopping spree. Yeah. The blessings of God may be there for provision for something in the future. Yeah. God will provide. Mm -hmm. You know the thing about it is, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thy own understanding. You know, uh, two things. In this ministry, I have had to learn more than anything since the beginning to trust in God because people will leave and it will call the spirit of fear. And God says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Yeah. God says, you, can, you have to learn to trust me, not in people. Man will fail you. Yeah. Attendance doesn't mean success. I know, I know pastors right now who have way more people. And I'm not even, think about this here, here's where we get, this is where we get confused, right? I'm not even saying that I'm more blessed because I have more material things because that's not what blessings are. That's what I found out. Blessings doesn't mean the amount of material things you have. 
Blessings is being able to enjoy what you have. Yeah. Blessings is being able to enjoy that which you have. Because some of us have a lot of stuff and we're still not in a position to enjoy it. And then when we get them things, we wonder why there's no happiness that's attached to it. God says you have to learn to trust in me, not in man, because man will fail you. Lean to your own understanding. I, I chose Harborside out of my own understanding. Because guess what I thought? This is what I thought. That's why you never lean on your own understanding. I thought if I get a place, parking, easy access, you can hit it from whatever 95 you want to hit it from. Over T Street, it's nowhere to park. Elementary school behind houses. I went to the marketers. I said, they said, Pastor Q, it's your location. It must be the location. People not coming. Guess what I do? Lean on own understanding. Change the location. Get them a hotel. Pay a lot of money. And guess what? Same amount of people. I said, well, God, I mean, I got the hotel, got the parking, easy access. It's, it's right in the center of everything in the DMV. A lot of people not coming. He says, you're failing to realize, I let you do it. Your own understanding, that's not a church, it's a place of discipleship. You will not attract church, you will attract church people. They will come and then they will leave because they need something more. And you don't have that. He said, what I don't have? Let me get the choir. Come on and play for the church. Ministry is about money nowadays. People are not playing for God. When I came up in church, the people who were in the band played for the church. And that was their way of service. People that ushered, ushered for the church. Since church has become since a money-making business, even the band members and the ushers want to be paid now. This is not a paid venture. People go from church to church to church and they want to be paid. Yeah. And, 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 and not, to, not to put anything out there, and this is why we have gone through different worship leaders. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, listen, this is not a great, this is not a place you're going to make money. Okay. Yeah. This is a place of discipleship. You need to go somewhere where you can entertain people because here is not about entertainment. We are worship here. We, we didn't come here to employ anybody. All of my wit and all of leaning on my own understanding, what don't I have that the other churches have? Went through that for a season, Brother Bruce. Went through that for a season, trying to find out why I can't draw and keep people. What's wrong with me? You know how we go through in our mind. The mind is the warfare. Is there something wrong with me? Is there something I'm doing wrong? Am I not supposed to be ministering? Why is more people leaving? God says, you don't even know what you have. Because you're focusing on what you don't have. Going back to the Jay-Z thing, Jay-Z said that people know the price of everything, but the value of nothing. Don't know the value of what you're getting here. And when people don't know worth and don't know value, they bounce around. If you're a person of value, people will leave you, but they will return when they can't find their, your value anywhere else. You've been good to some people and you let them leave. And they won't find your value nowhere else. They won't find nobody that will do for you what you did for them nowhere else. And they will be back. Because you won't find this type of value nowhere else. That's why they want to come back. But you allow people to leave. This is not just about church. This is about relationship, family relationships. I know I put my heart into it. I know I can't put no more into it. I can't give you no more entertainment. I have, I'm out. 
I'm not. I don't have a tongue. I don't have a dance. I don't have a song. All I have is this word. Yeah. Al Pacino said the skull face, all I have is my kahunas and my word. Yeah. Every Sunday I show up, them only two I have. I have that and my word. Yeah. I don't have nothing prophetic for you. I don't do witchcraft. I haven't come to prophesy over you. If that's what you want, then go there. We desire the prophetic. We desire the witchcraft. We desire for somebody to tell us something. I can't tell you nothing he ain't told you. What you want me to say? What more can I say? I'm only telling you what he told me. And you, you're not coming because I'm not telling you anything different. You don't question people when it listen. I tell people all the time, listen. And this is for all you who lied to me. <laughs> God told me that God told you uh -huh. he was going to give me a big church. Uh -huh. And the only thing he's done is God gave me is big things. Okay. He has not given me a big church. It was a lie the whole time. Coming from the prophetic. God told me, tell you, he gonna move and he gonna, he gonna grow that ministry of yours. He ain't did it yet. Cause guess what? Prosperity is not in people. I'm gonna tell you a secret. I've never told anybody this. There's a one millionaire that backs this whole ministry. And guess what? It's that way because if none of you show up. And I'm okay with that, but I trust the fact that if he ever leaves, and guess what? He don't even come to this church. God says, I will give you one person. That make sure everything is taken care of. Just do it. I don't need 50 people. I don't need 50 people to do this, people. I don't need to pass the basket to do this, people. Yeah. See, the thing about it is, you think it takes 5,000 people to be a mega church. Sometimes it takes two people. <laughs> What do you want? What do you want, Pastor Q? You, 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 you want more people? God says, I'm, I'm not a people pleaser. That's not what I do. I can't give you more people. It's free will. Yeah. Come on. What I can do is bless you. Yeah. I can bless you like them. I can't give you people like them. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, do you want to be more famous or rich? Some people want to be more famous. I know a lot of people that are famous and broke. I know people that got views in on the air mattress. I'm not picking. It's easy to set up your live in the background looks like you look good. It's easy to try on clothes, post them, and take them back and return them. It's easy. <laughs> They did a report, they said you got more IG models living in a space. <laughs> All these only fans and it's only you. <laughs> the facade of things. Do you God says, can you want to be famous? You want to be rich. And it's not about being rich because for the love of money is the root of all evil. God showed me this and this is no slight against anybody he said when people have more members than you there's a reason why because that's what they market for mm -hmm. do you market for people or do you market for souls mm -hmm. you ever been to a church they say listen you invite five people 
Invite 10 people. Give you a gift card. That, that's, that, that's, that's not ministry. Jesus didn't say, hey, listen, Peter, you invite five people, $50. John, 10 people, I'll give you 100 And we look at, that's the way to get people into the church. Well, the Bible said he adds into the church daily to those whom he wanted. He add to the church, I can't invite. Not saying don't invite, but even when I do invite, I shouldn't get upset when I don't keep. Because at times, I have invited what I was not supposed to have. Invitation. We pass out, you ever pass out invitation? You tell everybody you're having something. This is a great thing of life. I invited everybody and a man who didn't show, I'm so mad who didn't show, I can't even be happy about what, who came. Because I'm in my own head about why nobody ain't supporting me. Have you ever invited everybody? But guess what? The people who were supposed to be there came. And this and this is great teaching. Sometimes people come just to see who didn't come. It had nothing to do with you. The ministry and things of life produce spies. People don't show up for you. They show up to see if you're still in the same place. If y'all still in the same church. Have y'all grown any? Then I will come back when there's more men in the church. When there's more women in the church. Because I didn't come for ministry. I came for a mate. I came to a place where I can worship where it's popular. I want to be able to tell people I go to this church. And NBA people go to this church. And celebrities go to this church. I don't care about the word of the church. I just want to go to the, the church where the gift was set. The place where it's cool to be. Of great teaching. If you continue to go where it's cool to be, you will be in a place where it's hot to be. Keep going to places where it's cool to be. And you will go to a place where you can't adjust the thermostat. It's that way all the time. Because you keep going where it's cool to be. Nobody tells me how good the word is. Yeah. They tell me how good the church is. Yeah. Who goes there? Yeah. How many people they have? Yeah. Mm. A great teacher. God showed me. Sometimes when we hang out and go out. Back in the day, I'll give you a, a good reference. Today's time of having a good time is going in a place where there's a lot of people. Yeah. And nobody even dances, right? Back in the day, people had house parties with three and four people. Didn't matter who came, you went to dance. Yeah. Somebody told me a long time ago, if you went to a place to dance and you danced, it didn't matter who showed up. Yeah. I had a chance to dance. I had a good time. Mm -hmm. The reason why I don't want to go to a place because of a club or a party, there's not a lot of people because I didn't come. <laughs> I didn't come to dance. I came to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't come to worship. I came to be seen. Yeah. Of a great teacher, and I'll step on some feet this morning, and I'll probably get a few of you to log off, and that which is fine with me. <laughs> of a great teacher, I know for sure that your pastor listens to me, and you listen to me once you have left your church of entertainment and came to me for the word. And, and, and listen, I'm okay with that. I'm where you get the word. That's where you get your entertainment. Yes, yes, yes. Thousands of views. Mm -hmm. People come past you. You and my pastor preach the same thing. Mm -hmm. well, wonder what's wrong with me. No, no, no. It's not what's wrong with me. Is that you're getting what you came for. I don't have that. What I'm not about to do is be up here sweating. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, feel, I 
pillow, but too much for my clothes to be up here sweating. I'm a little too cool to be jumping up and down. But I'm, I'm not about to, and the Lord saved you to death. I don't need an organ hit. But huffing and puffing. I don't, I don't like the soups enough. I'm not, I don't love the robe enough. I'm not that invested in change to get people. I, I, I'm okay staying this way. I've, I've heard people in marketing, Pastor Q, if you would do more of this, wear less of that, you would get, I, I, I'm not in, see, I, I would, I, I would have to compromise for the money. But when you're not hungry for money, there is no compromise needed. want to change and receive more church people or do you want to stay the same and receive more disciples yeah. and win souls I technically I know you may not know this I know what it takes to get more people in here I just won't do it I'm not selling my soul for more people. I'm not going to be up here prophesying, promising you things under a $30 seat. This is a great place for the prophetic today. On the 10th day of the month, the third, the 10th day, third day of the month, 10th month, third day, the Trinity day. I could work you guys to death if I wanted to. <laughs> Jesus died at 33. This is the third. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God is telling me right now, we need a seed of $33. That's the type of stuff that people want to hear. And they will send it. We're getting ready to do a collection right now for $33 because this is the third. And Jesus was 33. Let's do a $33 offering. For the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The number three. And everybody was so. Manipulation. Mm -mm. Because the thing about it is God says this. Us teachers will be held. The teachers will be held accountable. Yes. He is great teaching, right? And I can boast in this. We rent out this room, and as you guys can hear this, there's other, there's two other churches occupying the rooms we used to occupy. I chose this room here because I like the time slot better, but I want to teach you something. How money is. A hotel told me that the reason why the time slots were the way they were because they didn't want to have three churches here at the same time. It's three services taking place right now. Yeah. It's amazing what you'll do. Yeah. I wonder if that policy is still in effect. Yeah. Obviously not. Because there's three churches operating now. Wonder what changed that? Had to be a budget meeting. <laughs> I remember the policy about not having to fill those up. Money. You, you, for the love of money yeah. is the root mm -hmm. yes. of all evil. It's, it's the root. Yeah. What that means, it doesn't mean that you can't have money. It just means that behind everything that takes place has to do with money. Yeah. I bet you what? You fell out with somebody, the root of it was money. Yes, yeah. I'm not going to be supporting his ministry and um, 
He has those cars and trucks, yet he don't want to pay the praise and worshipers. Hmm. Yeah, but this, you know, if 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 being me, I know, man, you got ministries out here. The pastors got jets. Y'all yeah. worry about my little bands. <laughs> Man, helicopters to the church. Rolls Royce out the church and leave you at the bus stop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and y'all got a nerve to talk about my little bitch. Yeah. Because he promised you something. <laughs> I love the prophetic because those operating on it still don't have it. <laughs> There's a, I'll give you a true word. Nobody wants to pay attention to this. Somebody can prophesy you something. You can receive it, get to know God, and have it taken away. Because the prophetic also brings you things, but not godly things. The demons, listen, the, the demons know how to prophesy as well. The demons can show you how to get, but only God can provide for you how to keep. That's why you have had some things and you have lost them. And you have prayed to keep them and still lost them. Yeah. God says, I would have never given you something in the place and the season that you're in. God says, I don't just give out gifts. I wish that you prosper even as your soul prospers. You, you, don't, you, you, don't, you don't have the attitude for promotion. Yeah. You don't have the attitude to be in leadership. I need to correct that first. You're not ready to be blessed. The prophetic knows how to give you stuff when your character is not in line. Because one thing the devil knows, if I, 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 the devil only blesses with things to keep you distant. Mm -hmm. God never blesses his people with stuff to keep them distant or push them to distancy. God will never give you something that will cause you to be pushed away from him. That's why he does, doesn't give it. One of the teachings with the prodigal son, a lot of people don't want to hear it know this, is that when God gave the one son his inheritance, he left. One son stayed. He gave them both the inheritance. Because of bad teaching, people don't realize that both of the sons received the inheritance. One person got their inheritance and stayed home. One person got their inheritance and left. The maturity. One person doesn't have the maturity to do with the blessing. So God is teaching you, when I have not yet given it to you, it has nothing to do with me not giving it to you, but you're not having the development and the maturity to be able to receive that which I'm giving you. Yes. Amen. You can't be hurt asking God for whole things. God's not going to give you somebody else to hurt. He's not going to give you something that you cannot maintain because of your attitude. Your attitude is keeping you from the things of God. Because what's going to happen, I tell you what, hurt people are online right now wishing for things to hurt other people. I tell, I tell you one thing that hurts the most is that I bought something to hurt you and it don't hurt you. That what hurts the most. Show up and ain't nobody even notice these shoes. That hurts the most. Been in the drive for six hours and nobody said nothing about your head. That hurts the most. <laughs> New shoes ain't nobody compliment. That hurts the most. Outfit just laid out on the bed all night with the intent to hurt them people the next morning and don't get that one compliment. Oh, this will hurt more when you the flyers and then they compliment somebody else who ain't nowhere near the fly. That hurts the most. Here it is, I done did all of this. And you complimenting somebody else who ain't even put together like this. That hurts the most. Who you doing it for? That's why I hurt so much. God says, I can't bless that. Because as I said last week, I, 
God blessed you to be able to attract that you may give off the word. Yeah. I bless you that your cup may run over into somebody else. Hey, hey chief, I didn't bless you to hurt nobody else. Yeah. I tell you the truth. Some people didn't show up to your event because they didn't have anything to wear. And they didn't have nobody to bring. And they're not successful enough to have anything to talk about. They'll come out when they have somebody to bring. They'll come out when they can talk about a promotion. They'll come out when they have something good to talk about. Until then, they're not coming. Mm, the pressure of not having anything to wear. <laughs> the pressure of showing up alone, still single, yeah. mm, my God. still not married. The pressure, yeah. mm. not showing up and say, "Hey, without all those things, I'm blessed. Yeah. I showed up healthy. Yeah. I'm still here after what I've been through. Yeah. I may not have everything going on, but what I can tell you is what I've been through yeah. and how I'm still here." That's my conversation. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. You had a ride here. You had a way here. You just ain't had nothing to wear. <laughs> and you're going to show up with something on that I'm not going to compliment you on. Because <laughs> I don't really think it's that nice. <laughs> I've lost, I didn't know I was losing people because I didn't think this stuff was that nice. <laughs> But you showed up to hurt me with something that I didn't think was that nice. It's not that nice to me. I'm just happy you came. You came to gag me. I don't think it's that nice. I'm, not, I'm into people. Not what you have. I'm closing. Let me say this because even, you know, in this ministry, you, you're going to go through things that God has not given you. You know, the, the, me and Bruce talk about this all the time. God has not given you something to be popular. You guys may know this. I know this. My family know this. They go places everybody knows Pastor Q. Ain't too many people doing ministry and I don't boast in this that don't know who I am. Everybody, but 99% of them people do not support me. If you know what I'm doing, you stay far away from me. Because you know I ain't about to BS. You can't work him. Ain't no fooling him. <laughs> they wanted to come here they, they wanted to set up tables in the back. They wanted to sell their shea butter here. They wanted to sell their own dinners. <laughs> they wanted to make me a part of cliques. He ain't, you can't buy him. <laughs> God has already given him them things. I don't want to be a part of y'all things. Bruce will tell you, this, this thing is about being part of cliques. The real Illuminati in church mafia is the church. You, me, you don't get guest speakings. You ever wonder why they don't choose for me to speak at their churches? I speak well too. It's because of what I may say. Try me in this. What church has asked me to come be a guest speaker? Mm -hmm. Not him. He's a live wire. <laughs> I can't. I can't invite Pastor Q out to speak when he speaks against the prophetic. Mm -hmm. He gonna mess up the bag that Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Intimidation, and, and that's why I, I won't. And I'm okay with that because I know that yeah. I speak the truth. Ain't nobody inviting no true speakers to their ministry. 
Lawyers hang together. <laughs> your, your lawyer hangs out with the judge and the DEA who's going to give you the time. I'll tell you a great teacher. The reason why you, get the, you don't get the favor you get in the courtroom sometimes is because your lawyer doesn't have favor with the DA. Yeah. When your lawyer has favor with the DA and with the judge, he already know what he can get you off of because they golf together. They go to each other kids' fencing and piano lesson events. They exchange favors. So therefore, he already knows how much time you're going to get and what you're not going to get. But when you get a lawyer that don't none of them know, <laughs> he's going to have to work hard. But if your lawyer knows the DA and the judge, it's a favor. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching. So ministry, all these pastors... What it is, they've learned how to click. Mm -hmm. And when you learn how to click, you learn how to blackmail. Yeah. And what happens is, what they do is that, if you consider yourself a small church, a small church is not connected to a major church. And this is where you have bishops. If he's a bishop, that means he's over a whole bunch of little churches. And that means that one bishop finds little churches to be over, go there and fall, prophesy to them. They feed unto him. That's like me being Rick Ross and I open up one wing stop, give everybody in my family a wing stop, but everybody's wing stop money comes to who? Me. So when you become a bishop, it's to open up other little churches that you can be over. I've had bishops come to me, want to be an overseer. What do I need you to oversee when I'm God's son? I don't need you to oversee. I, I have my own place. You're not, the you, only thing you can do is bring me more people, but what you can't do is bring me the grace and mercies and blessings of God. Because I'm doing that and have done that without having a bishop. Blackball him. Mm -hmm. He will not join. Because he has not decided to be one of us. So we'll blackball him. That's real. That's real. Come on. Hey, that's real. No, not him. Listen to his doctrine. Mm -hmm. His doctrine is a cancer. Mm -hmm. And since yeah. his doctrine is a cancer, mm -hmm. let's put something out on him. Mm -hmm. His doctrine is a cancer. And when your doctrine becomes a cancer, you cannot be a part of this clique. You don't know in the time of Jesus, there were other people preaching the gospel of way as well. They said, Jesus, there's another man out here preaching the same gospel. Jesus said, well, no, he's not against us, he's for us. Let him preach. Jesus' biggest or greatest enemy wasn't the devil. It was the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the people that knew the law. The whole ministry, Jesus was at war against religious people. The most popular scripture in the Bible that nobody ever pays attention to. A prophet is not accepted in his own hometown. Prophets don't have mega churches. Because if that means if a prophet has a mega church, that makes the scripture wrong. You can't be a prophet and have that many people. So who are you? Prophets don't have a lot of followers. In order to have that many people follow you, I'm not hating against nobody. Who are you? Because you attract your own. Who sent you? I will follow and worship my own. I will go to a place where they tell me you want to hear. I'll bless you with something. I got to stop, but I'm in it. I'm in it right now. You lose more friends telling the truth. Amen. Nobody has a following like fake people. Amen. You lose more people telling the truth. 
when you fake and you just like everybody else, you have an abundance of people that follow you. If you meet people, real people, hang with very few people. And the reason why the truth tellers have very few people, because nobody wants to be around somebody that's constantly telling them the truth, constantly telling them what they need to do, and constantly telling them what's best for them. But those people tend to run to people who tell the truth once all the fake people are gone. Pastor, more people on the phone during the week than people that come to the church. Yeah. Help people during the week, more people that come to the church. And it used to make me bitter. Yeah. But I had to grow. You know what I want to tell people sometimes? Call your own pastor. Oh, that's right. You can't get to him. <laughs> become the most accessible, mm -hmm. unreachable. You can't reach you. Yeah. Right. People call me and, and they call me for advice and they go to another church. Yeah. Oh I want to tell you go to their own church and get bothered. <laughs> People call me all day long with what's wrong with their church. You keep going. <laughs> but I got to give you the same grace I give people who are in bad relationships. You know? <laughs> I counsel people on marriages and bad churches. Yeah. That's what I do well, every day. Somebody who's calling me, telling me what they do wrong with the church. Guess what? They go back. Yeah. Tell me everything he or she do wrong what they do. They go back. Yeah. I'm just in the counseling business, helping people that's going back to somewhere else. Yeah. Get the word and counsel and reproof from me and go worship somewhere else. Mm -hmm. This is discipleship. Yeah. I tell you what, 20 years ago, I wouldn't want to be here either. <laughs> I'm being honest. Didn't put this sweat suit on to be seen by 10 people. <laughs> Clean. <laughs> I mean, out the church, I want to stand in the lobby and stand in the kitchen. I want to be seen. Yeah. I'm just waiting for it to let out. Get blessed. <laughs> <Yeah. Wow. laughs> I mean, here the way I, I, I can't wait till it let out. I don't have the time. I don't even know what they preach. <laughs> they write nothing down. I've learned how to tolerate for an hour or two. Yeah. How patient the devil is, Bruce. He's learned. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I've been invited. I'll say this because you know, it happens. Some of us, you can you can invite that man to church. You're going to bring him to church. The devil has learned how to sleep through the sermon. We, the, the, the enemy has learned how to be invited to church and pay attention to nothing but the patience to be able to sit there. Amen. We get people and try to drag them to church. And the whole time they're on autopilot. Amen. We have learned how to sit under ministry. But the old songs, it was LGD, I think going back a little far, your, your, your body's here with me, but you your mind is on the other side of the tank. <laughs> Body in church. Mind is on if your team gonna win today. Yeah. I've been preaching it the whole time. Somebody been calculating their bills. <laughs> Where they going to eat when they leave here? Yeah. Often thought. Yeah. Only thing they heard is let's stand. <laughs> That's, that's basically who I was, so I understand. Yeah. Didn't get the word. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say I went because let me teach you great teaching. Brother Bruce will tell you this. It feels better to go than to know. <clears throat> Many people go to the doctor, they feel good, but they didn't do nothing the doctor told them to do. <laughs> you still eat the stuff, you ain't supposed to eat with doctor, but you went to the doctor. It's, it's so psychological that it comes to a place that just going to church feels good. It's not about what I learned. I just want, I just want to go and get it off my conscience that I went. Yeah. Yeah. And when you become that person, you start doing things. I got to go by mom's house. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go just say I went. I'm not going by to see our mama doing fellowship. 
I got to go by the grave site, not because I want to go, just say I went. I got to go by Bernadine's house, I didn't really want to go, but just say I went. You'll just start going places. People pleasing. Not learning nothing while you're there. Go ahead and stand up. Oh, yeah, we stand me real close. <laughs> they thought they were still in the joke. <laughs> Amen. Father, we thank you for this word this time. Thank you for blessings and keeping us in all things. Oh, Father God, thank you for the word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Bless God.